I have written plenty of titles in my lifetime, but this was the first time I felt really different. Something was different. More like, am I really seeing this happening kind of feeling? More like, can you really believe this feeling? Can Mitch McConnell really distance himself from the president? Someone who still has the approval of nearly 90% of Republican voters. As you all know, Mitch McConnell wouldn't make a statement without a focus group test. If it doesn't move the needle, then why bother with it? That's who he is and he doesn't even hide it. And according to the Senate Majority Leader, the White House is paying the price for its approach to masks and social distancing. He really said it. I'm not making this up. This is what he said. If any of you have been around me since May the 1st, I have said, wear your mask, practice social distancing. It's the only way that we know of to prevent the spread until we get a vaccine. And we practice that in the Senate. Now you have heard of other places that have had a different view and they are, you know, paying the price for it. Huh, paying the price for it. That's very interesting, Mitch. The country has paid 211,000 lives for it. I'm glad that you finally let your displeasure be known. So McConnell delivered a not so subtle rebuke to the White House and tried to subtly remind us he was for masks and social distancing since May 1. Thanks, Mitch. We hear you. And we all know how supportive you have been about social distancing. We all really felt your same voice throughout the country. Now take a look at what Texas Senator John Cornyn told the Houston Chronicle editorial board. I think he let his guard down. And I think in his desire to try to demonstrate that we are somehow coming out of this and that the danger is not still with us, I think he got out over his skis. And frankly, I think it's a lesson to all of us that we need to exercise self-discipline. Did Senator Cornyn just ask the White House to exercise self-discipline? I will let you be the judge of that. Now here is Martha McSally trying to run things around a simple question. Here. Senator, the question was, are you proud of your support for President Trump? I'm proud to be fighting for Arizona every single day. Is that a yes or a no for President putting Trump? Putting legislation on President Trump's desk. So you're proud of your support for you, President you Trump? You look at the legislation we put on his desk, it's to cut Arizona taxes. It sounds like she is proud of her support I'm for President Trump. I'm proud to be fighting Trump. for Arizona over here. Senator it was funny, I'm sorry. I'm going to walk you through that exchange again. So the moderator asks, Senator, the question was, are you proud of your support for the president? Senator Martha McSally, I'm proud to be fighting for Arizona every single day. And the moderator kept pushing again and again, but Martha McSally will not say that she is proud of her support for President Trump. My oh my. Now, how many of you think all these statements were just a coincidence? All of them happened in a space of few days. Senator Cornyn suggestively says that White House must have exercised some self-discipline. Then Martha McSally on live TV refuses to say that she is proud of her support for Trump. She is for Arizona, she kept saying. Then the mighty Mitch says the White House is paying the price for its lax coronavirus protection measures. Now, Senator Tom Tillis from North Carolina said this and I quote, the best check on a Biden presidency is for Republicans to have a majority in the Senate. And I do think checks and balances does resonate with North Carolina voters. Yes, it is true. Republicans are starting to distance themselves from President Trump. And they are doing it in full public view. And it looks like they have all got the blessings from none other than the Mitch McConnell. I still cannot believe that this is happening. But it is. And it does make me laugh, more like a painful laugh. No rebuke when Trump asked us to inject disinfectant. No distancing when Trump promoted hydroxychloroquine. No pushback when Trump rallied everyone against masks. All this while, Trump was GOP and GOP was Trump. Mitch McConnell was somewhere behind. And the electoral map for the Senate moves from 4 toss-ups to 10 or 12 toss-ups. You see Senator Cornyn running away from Trump. Martha McSally suddenly is not so publicly proud of her support for Trump. Mitch McConnell wants to remind us that he hasn't been to the White House for months because of lax coronavirus protections. And Tom Tillis is talking about why the Republican Senate majority is important to keep a check on Biden presidency. 
The map has gone way deep into the well, Mitch. I just checked. Your Senate candidates are trailing Democrats in Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Maine, North Carolina, and South Carolina. It looks like things are hot for the GOP in Georgia as well. Maybe throw in Texas into the mix. You may get back North Carolina, but you may end up losing South Carolina. So you have six incumbents trailing and another two or three running a tie or slightly ahead. And the Democrats only need four seats to win the majority in the Senate. I wonder why the Supreme Court nomination didn't help, the, help to bridge the gap. Hmm. I wonder why people keep giving money this year to Democratic candidates. I wonder what will happen if Democrats only win half the Senate seats they are leading now. I wonder if anything would have been different if all four of you voiced your disagreement when hydroxychloroquine was introduced to us in March. I wonder if the polling numbers we are seeing today would be different if 53 Republican senators had said in May in one voice that masks are a good barrier to stop the coronavirus spread and social distancing will help us to keep the economy open. I wonder, I really do. You said some are paying the price for not practicing social distancing and not using masks. I'm just going to say you are going to pay the price the majority lead attack for not saying all of these things that you're saying now earlier. You could have said this in March or in April or in May or in June, July, August or in September. How many lives would that have saved? I know I get a decent amount of traffic from Trump supporters. This final segment is for you folks. I am sorry to say it looks like the GOP has decided to cut and run as far away from Trump as possible. The bad news for you is they would not have done this without some hard data in front of them. There is zero chance that they made this call to put some distance between Trump campaign and their Senate campaign unless they saw that the support levels are cratering. They all could have done this earlier, but the fact that they are doing it in the final weeks is a clear sign that they are getting desperate and they will not be desperate unless they fear their re-election chances. If senators are fearful of getting re-elected, then Trump really does not have a chance to turn things around. Because whatever the chance that's left, it will be burnt by the senator's decision to publicly slam the White House. Just imagine this. Biden campaign turns these statements from Cornyn, Mitch McConnell, Martha McSally into ads and start running these spots in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Florida and all the battleground states. No matter how Trump campaign tries to push their COVID messaging, it will get punctured. Cornyn ad in Ohio, Martha McSally ad in Texas, and all three of them or four of them in Florida. There is no way Trump campaign will be able to recover from that. GOP Senate campaign versus Trump campaign is the best way to lose both of them and it is happening. Enjoy the ride. Having watched Biden campaign for the last six months, I don't think they are going to let this one pass. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe.